So I remember that water flows upward because it's moving downward energetically. My students and I are working on a project here on San Cristobal uh, studying the water cycle and pedogenesis or the formation of soils um, that occur here in the atom. So right now we have uh, designated uh, four different sites. These are our sites where we're monitoring different hydroclimatic variables like precipitation, wind speed, relative humidity. We are studying the role of fog and the role of precipitation in the health of the ecosystems here in San Cristobal. So we're trying to understand how important fog is to um, water that is contributed to plants uh, as well as water that is accumulated up at El Junco, for example. What this machine measures is um, water potential, or it measures negative pressure. So by applying pressure to this part of the leaf and seeing how much uh, pressure it takes to shoot it upwards, it's basically the inverse of what it takes for the plant to suck up water in the first place. So it's indicating exactly how water stressed the plant is. Yep. <laughs> and we're also trying to understand the role of the different climatic zones that you find here in San Cristobal on um, the weathering and on the generation of the weathering of rock and the generation of soil, new soil. Um, so we are taking advantage of the natural laboratory that you find here in San Cristobal uh, across these different hydroclimatic uh, gradients to um, address these questions along the gradients. We are trying to understand the spatial distribution of soil moisture as well as soil depth. So what we have done is we have traveled across the different climate zones on San Cristobal and um, we're measuring soil moisture with the TDR probe, also soil depth with just this typical soil probe. And um, we're hoping that there will be some sort of correlation between the soil moisture and the soil depth, also hoping to see if there's some variance as a result of the climate. What I've done is I've excavated soil pits and then I've collected samples from 10, 20, and 30 centimeter depths, as well as in different soil horizons. What I'm now doing is I'm allowing these soils to dry and I'm measuring the mass every single day in the morning and in the evening. And hopefully what I'll be able to do is develop a dry down curve to understand how much these soils hold on to water. And that gives us all sorts of really interesting information about the hydraulic properties of soils and how water can move through the soils. You have different sizes. Each one gets progressively finer. And what I'll be doing with this is I'll be grinding it into a, a really, really fine homogenous powder. I'll be putting that on a regular glass microscope slide and then I'll be smacking it with a laser. Um, I'll be able to measure how the powdered version of this diffracts that laser light. And once I can measure that, then I can figure out exactly what minerals are in this, this crushed rock. And this is important because this is going to give us an idea of sort of how the, the rocks in Galapagos weather. And that's going to tell us how soils form, which has huge implications for agriculture, for the permanent population on this island, and also for dealing with water management, water shortages, and also invasive versus endemic species.